If your Philips TV Wi-Fi is not working, then we're going to cover exactly what you need to do to fix it. So most Wi-Fi connection issues are caused by software problems within your TV, but sometimes the cause could be problems with the 2.4 GHz or 5 GHz Wi-Fi bandwidths, sometimes by IP lease expiration or by MAC address filtering. Now the first step is to determine if the problem is with your TV itself or with your Wi-Fi router. So to help localise the problem, you want to set up a hotspot on your phone and then connect your TV to your phone's hotspot. So you can set up a hotspot on iPhones from um, personal hotspot uh, option and on Android from uh, hotspot and tethering from within network and internet. If your TV then connects to your phone hotspot and can access the internet through your phone, assuming that you've got a mobile data switched on your phone, then you can assume that you have a problem with your router and not with your TV. If your TV will not connect to your phone hotspot, then you either have a software issue with your TV or a hardware problem with the Wi-Fi card in your TV. So depending on uh, the results of this test, you can then follow the router troubleshooting steps or the TV troubleshooting steps. We'll start by covering the router troubleshooting steps. And if you want to jump straight to the TV troubleshooting steps, then there'll be a, a timestamp below. So to fix router Wi-Fi problems, first of all, just make sure that your Wi-Fi password is correct. Um, it seems a pretty simple step, but just try, maybe just try um, disconnecting Wi-Fi on your phone and then reconnecting using what you think is the password and making sure that your phone can definitely um, connect to your Wi-Fi using that password. You also want to make sure that your router is not set up for MAC address filtering. So if you or, or someone else in your family has switched this on at the router level, then your TV will be able to connect to the router, but it won't be allowed to connect to the internet through the router. So if you're seeing a TV that is connecting to the router but can't get internet, then uh, check for MAC address filtering. So on your, your phone or on your laptop, you'll need to go to the admin IP address for your router. That will be on a label somewhere on the router itself. Uh, it's usually something like 192.168.1.1. You'll have to log into your router and the, the login details should again be on a sticker on the router itself. And then you'll go to something like advanced or expert settings and find Mac filtering and make sure it's switched off. So if that's off, then just um, check that you don't have any, any Wi-Fi interference or too many devices uh, trying to connect to your router. So trying to find if there's um, interference can be a bit tricky. Um, but if you can just try putting your phone, say, next to your TV and, and try connecting to the internet through your router from your phone, then that can help determine if, the, if there is an interference problem. And if you've got a lot of devices connected to your router, then just try switching a few of them off. Now, a pretty common issue is, um, particularly with older TVs, is that they cannot connect to the 5 gigahertz Wi-Fi channel that modern routers use and they can only connect on 2.4 gigahertz instead. So you can check the user manual for your specific TV to see, see which bandwidth it supports. Um, but even some TVs from as late as 2018 only support 2.4 gigahertz. So you just need to check that your router is broadcasting both a 5 gigahertz and a 2.4 gigahertz signal. So again, go to the, the router's admin page um, on 192.168.1.1 or, or similar from your phone. And then just have a look to see that it is broadcasting both bandwidths. And you can also change um, the, the the megahertz that each that each band is um, that each frequency is broadcasting at from within your Wi-Fi settings, which can help if there is um, potentially interference on your Wi-Fi. Finally, you just want to try resetting your router if none of that has helped. So there'll be a, a hard reset switch on the back of your router. Just put a paper clip or a pen into that switch and hold it for at least 10 seconds and reset your router back to factory settings and then try your TV again. So now we'll move on to Wi-Fi problems with the TV itself. So this is assuming that the router is fine. 
So first of all, just try power cycling your TV. Uh, it's a pretty simple step, but honestly, in about 30% of cases, this does uh, fix the problem. So just switch off and unplug your TV. Hold down the physical power button on the TV for at least 15 seconds. Then wait for at least 30 minutes for any residual power to drain from the TV's capacitors and plug your TV back in and try switching it on again. If that doesn't help, and if the Wi-Fi is not working on your, on your TV, but it is working on other devices, then check for an issue with your TV's IP and DNS addresses. So in most cases, your TV should be set up to automatically select an IP address from your router, and it should automatically also pull a DNS address it's possible that the IP address uh, lookup might have been set to manual and your uh, DNS settings could be um, causing a conflict. So go into your uh, network settings on your TV and check that the IP setting um, or IP address uh, is set to uh, get automatically. If not, just if it's on manual, then just change it to, to automatic and um, restart your TV. Um, this should also be the same for DNS, that should also be set to automatic. If you want to, to double check that the DNS is not causing a conflict, you can change the DNS to manual and use a DNS server of 8.8.8.8, um, which is one of Google's DNS servers, which will definitely be working. You can also just try updating your TV's firmware. So if your TV keeps disconnecting from Wi-Fi, then updating the firmware is usually the best option. Um, so that will be somewhere in settings, support, and then software update. Um, make sure auto update is on, and there should also be a, a check now or an update now button, so you can just update the firmware. Older models of TV might need to update the firmware by USB, and there's steps on how to do this in the linked article below. You should also just check that your TV's time and date is correct. Again, this is a pretty common cause of uh, Wi-Fi connection issues with TVs. So what happens is that IP addresses are assigned automatically over DHCP by your router. And we just checked that the, the IP address is set to get automatically. But these IP addresses have a lease expiration time attached. And this is usually 24 hours to one week, depending on the router. And after this time is up, the router will reclaim the IP address and either assign a new one to your TV or releases the old one back to your TV. Now if your TV's time and date are wrong and so they're in conflict with the, the time and date that's on your router which should be correct and which should pull the time and date uh, over your internet network then that can cause the IP address to expire at the moment of assigning it and then that prevents connection between your TV and router because there's conflict. So just go into the settings for your TV and manually update the date and time to today if it's not already showing this, or use um, uh, get time and date from network if your model has got that. And if you're still struggling, then just try factory resetting your TV. Um, so that will usually be in something like uh, general and privacy or support and then reset. Some TVs will need a pin, which you can see here, and others won't. But if your Wi-Fi is still not working and you've localised the problem to your TV itself, then it's almost certainly a hardware issue, um, so something wrong with the Wi-Fi card. So if you can live with it, then just um, using an Ethernet cable is the simplest way to get around it. If, if none of the other TV fixes have worked, that, you're, that you've got a failed Wi-Fi module within the TV. They're um, uh, pretty small. They just uh, plug into the, into the main board itself um, and they're very easy to replace. They shouldn't cost much to get a replacement off eBay. Um, and you can have a look at some steps on how to replace that in the linked article below.